Welcome to this demo video of the Windows Virtual Desktop Quick Start solution. The Windows Virtual Desktop Quick Start is intended to simplify and automate the Windows Virtual Desktop or WVD deployments. Here on wvdquickstart.com you'll find all the information you need. Here we are on the Getting Started page where today we're going to do a deployment starting with a completely empty new subscription. In case you want to deploy WVD with an existing Azure ADDS or native AD setup, you would choose the right button on the Getting Started page. After clicking the button, we'll find a page with instructions on how to use the Quick Start, as well as a list of the prerequisites, which in this case is simply an Azure subscription that you are the owner of. So now we're going to go ahead and kick off the initial ARM deployment by clicking the magical Deploy to Azure button. This button will take us to the Azure portal, as you can see, where we'll log in with our Azure credentials. Here, we will be asked for some limited user input. So we're just going to go ahead and create a new resource group, WVD, and enter some user input, including the domain name, uh, the Azure credentials that we're currently logged in with, so that's uh, user principal name and password, as well as an optional notification email, where we will get an email once the quick start has completed. As we click purchase, the deployment will kick off. And this deployment is going to set up a couple of resources for us. First of all, it's going to configure some storage account, an automation account with Azure Runbooks. And very importantly, it's going to deploy an Azure ADDS managed domain for us. Now, the deployment of this domain is actually going to take roughly 40 minutes. And once that deployment finishes, it takes another 40 minutes for the domain to really start running. Therefore, after the domain finish deploying in this overview, we can see that in the runbook, as we go to the resource group that we're deploying to and click on the DevOps setup runbook, we can actually see in the output that it's waiting for the domain to finish deploying, saying that it will sleep for 45 minutes until continuing the deployment with the WVD quick start. As this runbook finishes up, which is also going to create an Azure DevOps automation organization for us, we can see that the last act is the create DevOps pipeline. This pipeline is actually the resource that's going to deploy all our WVD resources for us. So if we go to the resource group here, we'll find a variety of resources, including the domain we deployed, as well as, very importantly, the DevOps organization I was talking about. So let's navigate to dev.azure.com. There, once we sign in, we'll actually see that there's a quick start project created for us. Let's click on that and navigate to the pipelines section. Here, we'll find an already running WVD quick start automation pipeline. If we click on it, we'll see all the tasks laid out over here. And if we actually click on those tasks, we'll get a very detailed deployment output so that we can follow along exactly with what's happening in the pipeline. This pipeline, which is going to deploy the virtual machines for us, as well as a host pool and application groups, will take roughly 20 minutes to complete. Then, as you would expect, you can also follow along with this deployment in the Azure portal. So right now, it's deploying the virtual machines. And if we go to the deployments in our WVD resource group, we'll actually see that that is happening there, too. As it deploys the WVD virtual machines, it will also execute certain custom script extensions. One of these will actually configure FSLogic's user profile management for us, which will allow us to dynamically attach user profiles. Now that the pipeline has finished up, we'll get all the green check marks indicating to us that it succeeded. We can navigate to the WVD web client, and here we can log in with a test user that was created in the automation process. This test user will always be WVD test user 001 at your domain name. So we're just going to log in here, where the password for this account will actually be created based on the name of the DevOps organization. So if we navigate back to the Azure portal, uh, in our resource group, we can just take the last part of our DevOps organization name, the part that starts with org. We're just going to copy that and paste it. As password here, the only thing we're going to do is we're going to append an exclamation point at the end, as you can see here, and that'll be the password for our test user. So we're going to sign in, and as we complete the sign-in here, we'll find a Windows Virtual Desktop workspace has been assigned to us. 
where I will see two remote apps as well as a session desktop, the remote desktop that we're going to log into now with the same WVD test user credentials. Now this remote desktop offers the full desktop experience based on virtual machine in the Azure cloud. As we are logged in here, we'll find that we have access to a certain number of apps, including, for example, Word, as we installed Office 365 in this environment, as well as Microsoft Teams. Um, but one last thing I'd like to show you here is the FS Logix user profile management. So back in the Azure portal, if we go to storage accounts, we'll find a profile storage account. This storage account under file shares will have the WVD profiles file share. And here we'll find our test user user profile, just as we would expect in an FSLogic setup. This user can be managed directly in the Azure portal as well. Under Azure Active Directory, we'll find a user group called WVD Test Users, which currently only has one member, our test user 001. All right, that'll be the end of the quick start demo for today. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. And I hope the quick start can be of good use to you. Thank you for watching.